Hey guys, Superbro Mike here, and in today's video we take a look at the most shocking twists from video game history. Many games feature twists and turns, they are a device to keep players engaged and the story being told interesting. However, sometimes a revelation is so big and unexpected that it literally makes us rethink everything that has come before it and even how we think about the game as a whole. In this video, we run down a list of the most shocking video game plot twists of all time. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be surprised. The original Resident Evil game tells a simple story full of mystery and intrigue. We assume the role of one of two members of a special police unit known as STARS, either playing as Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine. These characters become trapped in a creepy old mansion after their investigation into the origin of a number of strange occurrences around the local town of Raccoon City goes haywire. Their leader is Captain Albert Wesker, who always seems intent on asking his team to split up and investigate separately. What was that? Chris? No. Jill, go and investigate. I'm going with her. All right. You two go. I'll secure this area. Throughout their adventure, Chris and Jill run into many hideous monsters, including zombies, giant snakes, sharks, and super-fast predators known as hunters. They eventually discover these are experiments infected by a compound known as the T-Virus, a creation of the evil Umbrella Corporation which operates out of a secret laboratory hidden deep beneath the mansion. It is here they also discover their Captain Wesker is a double agent, working for the Umbrella Corporation and helping them to cover up their radical human experiments and make sure his team doesn't live to tell the tale. Wesker! Thank you, Barry. Well, what do you know? Oh, don't blame Barry for everything. I hear that his better half and two lovely daughters will be in danger if he doesn't do everything I tell him to. <sighs> Wesker, you're pathetic. Unfortunately for Wesker, Umbrella's latest experiment, the Tyrant, turns on him before attacking the remaining members of the STARS unit. So that's karma for you, I suppose. In Portal, we awaken inside a test chamber within a government testing facility with no explanation as to why or how we got there. As we explore the facility, an AI known as GLaDOS calmly helps us navigate a series of puzzle rooms designed to test the human mind to its limits. This AI even provides us with a portal gun to help traverse the often hazardous environment. Eventually, after many trials have been completed, we are asked to dispose of our portal gun and step onto a moving platform to receive our prize, a delicious slice of cake. When you are done, you will drop the device in the Equipment Recovery Annex, in which the center regulations require both hands to be empty before any cake. However, GLaDOS has other plans for our character and attempts to incinerate us in a pit of fire. The cake was a lie. After we escape incineration, GLaDOS grows increasingly more unhinged as it attempts to kill us at every turn. We discover the scientists manning this research centre were in fact killed by GLaDOS when she released clouds of deadly neurotoxin into the facility after they tried to shut her down. Good news. I figured out what that thing you just incinerated did. It was a morality core they installed after I flooded the enrichment center with a deadly neurotoxin to make me stop flooding the enrichment center with a deadly neurotoxin. So get comfortable while I warm up the neurotoxin emitters. So this whole time we have been exploring a ghost town overtaken by a dangerous rogue AI whose only objective is to test the last remaining human, us. Braid is a 2D platformer where we play as a young adventurer named Tim who sets off from his burning hometown to seek out a monster who has kidnapped the princess. Yes, it's all very Super Mario. 
However, the feature that defines Braid from other games such as Mario comes with his ability to rewind time after he has died. This rewind action is used to solve many of the game's challenging puzzles. However, there is something uneasy about this adventure, with each level having a different theme. These themes are often pretty dark, revolving around subjects such as desire, forgiveness and frustration. Eventually we reach the end of the game and discover that our character Tim has actually been the monster chasing the princess this entire time. The traps we have been evading are traps set by the princess and Knight trying to protect her from us. A twist that literally turns the conventional Mario storyline on its head. The Last of Us tells the story of a post-apocalyptic society where deadly spores infected much of a population, turning them into fungal zombies known as clickers. If someone comes into contact with a clicker or spore and is infected, there is no known cure and so they must be quarantined and killed. However, one girl called Ellie has been bitten and never became infected, meaning her blood may contain the key to a vaccine which would save mankind. Down on his luck smuggler Joel, who lost his daughter during the outbreak, begrudgingly accepts to escort Ellie across the country to a rebel organisation known as the Fireflies, who wish to research her condition in order to find a cure. The story of The Last of Us plays out over the course of a year, and during this time Joel and Ellie are forced to overcome many trials and tribulations. They form a bond and Ellie becomes a replacement for the hole in Joel's heart left by the death of his own daughter. So it is pretty shocking to discover upon delivering Ellie to the Fireflies that they intend to cut her up in order to research parts of her brain and anatomy. Meaning Joel has been escorting her to her death the entire time. Take me to her. You don't have to worry about her anymore. We'll take care I of her. I worry. Just let me see her, please. You can't. She's being prepped for surgery. The hell do you mean, surgery? The doctors tell me the cordyceps, the growth inside her, has somehow mutated. It's why she's immune. Once they remove it, they'll be able to reverse engineer a vaccine. But it grows all over the brain. Find someone else. There is no one else. Joel selfishly forfeits a possible way to cure the infection plaguing mankind in favour of saving his new daughter figure, the little girl he has grown to care for over the course of their adventure. When asked directly by Ellie if the operation was successful, Joel simply lies and tells her it was not. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the fireflies is true. I swear. In Silent Hill 2, we assume the role of James Sunderland, who has travelled to the eerie town of Silent Hill to search for Mary, his dead wife, who he received a letter from stating she would meet him in their special place. Mary died of that damn disease three years ago. So then, why am I looking for her? Our special place. What could she mean? Obviously intrigued by this mystery, the grieving husband begins exploring this gloomy ghost town in search of his lost love. Along the way, he encounters a host of grotesque creatures, all hellbent on destroying him before he can discover the truth. But what is the truth? Well, the chilling twist to this particular game is one that left many players feeling supremely uncomfortable. Toward the end of Silent Hill 2's story, James discovers a videotape which reveals he killed his wife who was terminally ill before ever reaching the town. Forgive me. I told you that I wanted to die, James. That's why I did it, honey. I just couldn't watch you suffer. <laughs> the truth is, part of me hated you for taking away my life. So the monsters and weird locations James has been fighting and exploring are in fact all physical manifestations of his own guilt, fears and other repressed emotions. Third person shooter Spec Ops The Line contains a number of shocking plot revelations. One of the most shocking is a scene in which Captain Martin Walker and his team call in an airstrike of white phosphorus to wipe out an enemy encampment only to discover the camp was full of innocent civilians who had been taken prisoner by the enemy. Are those civilians 
Where'd they come from? There's no camp here. They took them from the nest. That hotel back at the Stormwall? No, 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 those can't be the civvies that got kidnapped. It's not possible. The game focuses on showing the fallout and casualties of war as we engage in battle across the sand dunes of the Dubai Desert. Despite the horrific moment mentioned earlier, Spec Ops biggest twist of all comes toward the end of the game. Throughout the story, our character Captain Walker has been talking to exiled Colonel John Conrad over the radio. Conrad questions Walker's morality as he commits more and more atrocious acts of war. Eventually Walker discovers the corpse of the man he has been talking to this entire time. Conrad has been dead a while and so it means our character has been gradually slipping into insanity as we have been playing the game, using the voice of the dead Colonel in his head to rationalise his hideous actions. Even after witnessing the truth before his eyes, Walker still sees the corpse of Colonel Conrad reanimate and point a gun at his head, meaning by the end of the game he is truly lost in madness. I didn't mean to hurt anybody. No one ever does, Walker. Three. Four. Is this really what you want, Walker? Heavy rain centres around the kidnap of a young boy named Jason and how his abduction affects the lives of four other people, all of which we get to play during the game's story. A mysterious figure known as the Origami Killer is on the loose and believed to be responsible for not only Jason's kidnapping but also the murder of several other children. This killer always leaves a piece of origami artwork at the scene of his crime, hence the name. As well as playing as Jason's father Ethan, we also take on the role of Madison who is an investigative journalist, Norman, a member of the FBI, and Scott Shelby, a former police officer turned private investigator desperate to track down the origami killer and stop his latest crime. Or so it would seem. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? There was just the cell phone. Do you still have it? It's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. We later discover that Scott Shelby, one of the four main characters we have been controlling throughout the game, is in fact the origami killer. The game has cleverly only shown his investigation and not his crimes. In fact, his entire investigation was a way of collecting up any evidence against him so he could dispose of it and stay one step ahead of the authorities pursuing him. This is surely one of the most chilling plot twists on today's rundown. All those murders, just to find a father capable of saving his son. Just to find a father? Do you have any idea how it feels to be a worthless nothing in your father's eyes? Believe me, I've suffered just as much as my victims. After crash landing in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, airplane passenger Jack swims to his only beacon of hope, a lighthouse inexplicably placed at the site of the crash. Jack takes the submarine docked at the bottom of this lighthouse all the way down to an underwater city known as Rapture. This once utopian civilization has gone to hell and its residents have turned into crazy lunatics popped up on a drug known as Adam which provides its users with superhuman abilities. The leader of this fallen city is a man called Andrew Ryan, who is engaged in a civil war with freedom fighter Atlas. Atlas gets in touch with our character Jack and enlists his help in a bid to take down Ryan for good. I know you must feel like the unluckiest man in the world right now, but you're the only hope I'll ever see my wife and child again. Whenever we are asked to do something by Atlas, he uses the phrase, would you kindly? Would you kindly lower that weapon for a minute? In fact, we hear this phrase many, many times throughout our adventure. Eventually, when we confront Andrew Ryan, it is revealed Jack was born in Rapture and brainwashed at birth by Ryan's arch nemesis Frank Fontaine. Fontaine then sent Jack to the world above and called on him years later as an adult to return to Rapture and carry out his bidding. Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly? 
Bundy head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch. So this entire time, Would You Kindly has been used to force us into doing exactly what Fontaine wanted. What's more, it means there never really was an Atlas, and the voice we heard throughout the game was simply Fontaine playing a character. This legendary twist works so well, because we have been exposed to it throughout the entire game, we just never knew it until we reached the finale. And that wraps up this look at the most shocking twists in video game history, but maybe you have some others you think are worth looking into, and if so let me know in the comments section below. And remember to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. With that said, I'll say goodbye, and see you on the next video.